Hello and welcome to this presentation. I've entitled Power Series Expansion of Functions of a Single Real Variable X. This is just a quick revision of uh, important uh, ideas and uh, facts which are going to be important in our developing Power Series solutions to differential equations. So, talking about um, Power Series uh, Expansion, the idea is that uh, at some stage, mathematics developed uh, a way of uh, trying to represent elementary functions in in a way which is similar to polynomials. In other words, uh, trying to develop a method of representing functions as if they were polynomials. In this case, talking about polynomials, we're talking about an expression of this nature where by the C, Cn's from C0 to Cn are real coefficients and it is actually a finite sum of powers of uh, the independent variable x in this case and then we also need to understand that if the leading coefficient here cn is not equal to zero we'll call that a polynomial of degree n so talking about power series expansion power series are actually kind of uh, infinite sum like we that's what actually the weight series referred to is an infinite sum so the dots here it indicates that there are a lot of terms they continuing up to n and it continues it's called, uh, n tending towards uh, infinity that's what we call a series in this survey uh, like i said this is an actually an infinite sum of powers of ind independent variable x and then the power series if we determine the general ter the general coefficient we can also express it in a compact form this way using this sigma uh, sign so when we take this um, x function which is actually dotted here to indicate that it continues to infinity and express it this way would we'll say that the series has been has been, has, has been given in its uh, compact form or in this case I've written a compact version of the series using is sigma and then polynomials compared to to series expansion we not basically that it's important to note that a polynomial will be a final sum when where on the other hand a power series expansion would be an infinite sum it is important when you write your power series expansion to indicate these dots to communicate that message that this is an infinite sum or otherwise represent it in compact in the compact form this way and it denoting your index here as n from zero to infinity now we here n is a whole number so the question would be why would you bother about uh, representing functions in terms of some sort of or, or polynomial function or something similar to polynomial function and that actually talks to the advantages of polynomial functions advantage of polynomial functions is, is that first they are easy to manipulate for example if you are given a polynomial function of degree three as it is here they are easy to manipulate in terms of evaluating and the computing limits in this case if we were to evaluate this uh, to evaluate the function we we'll just substitute x and uh, x in the expression and it computes the value which you can denote this way as the value of the polynomial at 2. And then if, even if we were to calculate limit, we know the limits of polynomial functions, they coincide with their values. So in that way, polynomial function presents themselves as kind of very nice functions. In terms of sketching graphs for polynomial functions, the, the graphs are continuous and the functions are defined everywhere on the real number line. Now, they don't present situations of which are presented by rational functions of, for example, if we've got a function 1 over x we will see that this function at 0 it will be undefined so this kind of situation doesn't happen with polynomials so that's another advantage with polynomial functions then also they are easy to differentiate and they're easy to integrate and actually in both cases differentiation and integration we simply end up using the simplest rule of integration which is a power rule and now given the power series expansion we can actually use them to approximate uh, functions by just taking a certain number of terms depending on what we need or depending on the context we're dealing with that's why i'm using here the approximation sign because the power series function doesn't give exact values of the function but approximate values of the function and there are also issues of uh, convergence and divergence which we're not going to get into in, in this short presentation but only to mention that when the power series expansion is less than infinity when you write that so we say it's less than infinity meaning the sum of uh, these infinite terms approximate a certain finite value we would say then the series is convergent and on the other hand when uh, the series is expressed this way is greater than infinity we would say 
it is uh, divergent. However, the power series expansion reasonably inherit the good properties of uh, polynomials. Then that justifies us considering developing power series expansions of functions. For example, term by term differentiation and the integration can be carried out exactly in the same way we deal with the polynomials. In other words, in both cases, we can actually use the power rule for integration or differentiation. So now given a, a power series expansion like this, what would be the most natural question to ask? Before we do look at that question, we first of all, let's look at what, what we know about this expression. First of all, we know that x is the independent variable, so that's not an unknown. Then uh, nextly, n is a whole number, which is runs from zero to infinity so all that is known and actually what we see here is that we've got a sequence of coefficients c0 c1 so now it's when n is equal to zero we that corresponds to a coefficient c0 which is the independent term here and when n is equal to one we then can talk of c1 which is the coefficient there where x is equal to power 1. In that way, generating a sequence of coefficients, which if we knew them, we would then give explicitly the power series expansion of the function concern. Then the question would be, where do we get these coefficients, the cn's? That would be the question. I'm putting a question mark there as an emphasis that is a, for me, I take this as a very, very strong question where would we get the cns now observe if we're given a power series expansion in this form and then we've got this covered form here at this stage i would like to look at this power series expansion in this explicit form here as an infinite sum instead of looking at that because i want to make things look a bit uh, easier to understand so what we'd first do let's evaluate the function itself at zero we can see that the function looks more or less like a polynomial except that it is a series it has got infinite terms there they continue there we'll then evaluate this function as zero so which means in every term here we're going to substitute by zero and you can see that the powers of x are increasing from zero one two up to n and continues there so which means all the other terms coming from the side will be zero so that's what we have there so then we get that f at zero is equal to zero is equal to c zero in that case you can conclude that therefore the initial coefficient here is actually the value of the function at zero moving forward you can now differentiate the very function there using term by term differentiation and in each term we can apply power rule like you can see here you can n my paper c n multiplied by x to the power n minus 1 and do the same kind of action in every term there we get that the first first term here becomes c1 because the constant would differentiate to zero and then doing this evaluation again substituting c0 uh, substituting zero wherever we've got x there we get an expression like this and i think it's clear that this all this would be zero resulting in the fact that f prime at zero is equal to c1, which actually takes us to the fact that the coefficient here at x power one is actually the value of the function, of the, the value of the first derivative of the function at zero. And then we can continue this process because already we have seen that it is indicated that it looks like if we continue this, we can actually get to a sequence of the coefficients so then let's take this second derivative of the function which will look like this applying power rule to this expression and then again evaluating that at zero we will substitute zero there and we see that we are left with f second derivative is very zero is one times two times c2 and actually this coefficient here we can see uh, that uh, one times two is actually two factorial then we can then conclude that c2 is actually the second differential coefficient evaluated zero over two factorial and then proceeding to three to order th to the third 
differential coefficient, we differentiate this expression and we get that. And evaluating again at zero, this expression will substitute as zero here. And then we'll be left only with that, which gives us that uh, the third differential coefficient that divided to zero is simply three factorial multiplied by C3. And then we actually conclude then that C3 is equal to the third order differential coefficient divided to zero over three factorial. And now continuing with this process up to N, we can actually then arrive at the general form of the equation there, as the general coefficient of this power series expansion. So that takes us to evaluating that the nth order differential coefficient at zero, which gives us this, and then making C n subject the formula, we get that the general coefficient is given by the expression Cn equals to f n the order change coefficient evaluated z at zero over n factorial. Now, as you can see now, we've got the complete sequence of coefficients in the power series expansion, which means then we can actually proceed and write the power series expansion using this coefficient. Actually, this will be the coefficient for x power zero and this will be coefficient at x power 1, and here it will be x power n, and then it continues since it's a series. So then we get something uh, as a power series of this form, and this power series is, is named. Now that we've got a complete sequence of form coefficients for our power series expansion, we can now proceed and write the power series expansion in this form, taking the values we've just seen here as our coefficient C0, C1, up to C and so on. And this type of power series is actually called the McLaren series. But that is going to be clear later, uh, soon. As I go forward, you'll, you'll get to understand why I refer to it as McLaren series as compared to some other type of power series expansion. We note that uh, we, when we write it in, in, a, in a compact form, we simply take the general uh, coefficient and write there, and then make sure that we start our n at zero, going to infinity. And now, now really looking at this power series closely, note that I can actually rewrite this power series expansion in this form. Just check that x here. I've simple, for convenience, I've simply chosen to write it as x minus zero. It's because I want to introduce something to you. You can see now, even if I elevate this to power one, we've got the same thing there. And if I have this term to, to power two, I still have got x to the power two there. So I simply replace the way I've written x here and write it this way as x to x minus zero to the power, whatever power where I am, whether it's 2, 3, or n. And then once I've written that, I would like to introduce the idea of the center of development of a power series. So if I've written this way, I'm simply expressing and putting explicitly that this power series expansion is developed around x0. In this case, when I use x0, I'm referring to a particular number which is known. So in this case, this position which is here is occupied by x0 which actually coincides with zero so it's a power series expansion which is actually developed around zero or around the origin on the number line is referred to as mclaren series and then we can also consider any arbitrary number x0 which is not equal to zero and it develop a similar kind of series in the way that i would then replace this position of zero by x0 which is not equal to zero then the power series would now look like the following notice that i've said x0 is not equal to zero so for example i could say x0 is equal to pi so in that in other words that this power series expansion would look like um, f at pi plus the first differential coefficient evaluated at pi multiplied by x minus pi to the power one plus i hope you notice that here where there's the zero here also here the function is actually evaluated at the center of development which is zero so uh, here again we actually evaluate the function at the center of development which is x zero in this case which is pi so we continue with this thing then i would say it is 
a power series expansion developed around the center x0 equals to pi in that case we are actually we are actually talking about what we call a taylor series expansion these two are very very similar the only difference are very very similar in the way they are worked out but the only difference is the center of development that in the taylor series we would have x0 and that x0 would be different from the origin which is zero on the real number line then we call it that a taylor series expansion moving forward let's look again at the mclaren series note that if i consider that this function is y is equals to f of x i can actually express this series in terms of y this way where i can actually now take the differential coefficients as the differential coefficients of y instead of f i hope that is not confusing at all but the, the powers and everything else remains the same on that here we need a, a plus sign there then that we can now also talk of the general coefficient which in this case is the term we have here expressed in terms of n factorial again we have this we can now actually now with that we've got a, a general coefficient here we can actually drive towards expressing this in its compact form and also we have uh, this expression of y so in the compact form the two series they can be expressed this way they will be identically the same as long as we consider the fact that y is equal to f of x and then this way we would say the power series is given in its compact form so in your development of power series expansion it is sometimes very very important to be able to determine the general coefficient so that you can express the power series expansion in a compact way by just writing kind of one term like this using the sigma sign that is very important at this stage now i think we are ready to look at a simple example of a well-known function like sine x let's say here we are told to determine the mclaren series and the taylor series expansion centered at x0 equals to pi in this case if i were to say let's get the solution here we are, we can first of all just decide that let's develop this um, um, series up to let's say five first five nine zero coefficients so what you do then i would need derivatives up to differential coefficients of order five so the differential coefficient of order zero is actually sine x now going to differential coefficient of order one i'll get that as cos x and then the differential coefficient of order two that will be minus sine x and the, the differential coefficient of order three will be minus cos and as you can see it's easy differentiation just goes cos sine cos sine except for the change of sine then let's get the fourth differential coefficient so now i think this is enough for that since i need taylor series expansion and mclaren series, uh, series expansion i would simply write this here for mclaren i need x to be equal to zero and um, for taylor we need x to be equal to pi i'm just computing coefficient uh, the values values first and then i'll proceed to getting coefficient right. so sign is zero we know the value is zero cos there will give us one and then here we'll get zero and there we're going to get minus one then we get zero and then we get one that's what we get for this value in on the other hand if we come here we define would evaluate sine pi which again is going to give us zero and then cos at pi is going to give us minus one and then here we get zero and then here is going to get minus one for cos with the minus one there we're going to get one and then coming to this one we can get zero again and then we're going to get um, minus one and then in this case here we've got these coefficients so if we now decide to get to our c ends here and uh, c ends this side it will simply say yes yeah, zero over zero factorial if you look at that pattern we have zero factorial there then here we get one over one factorial which is simply one and there we get zero then we get zero here over two factorial which will give us coefficient zero and then here we're going to get minus one minus one over three factorial i'll leave it like that and then here we'll simply get zero and then here we're going to have um, one over five factorial and then similarly here we'll get zero minus one over one factorial which is minus one and then zero over two factorial which is simply zero and then one over three factorial and then zero over four factorial which is zero and then here minus one over five factorial so now once we've got the coefficients that we've seen before all what we need now is simply write our uh, power series expansion in this case i'm simply going to write the one for mclaren and then you must figure out yourself how to write the one for the taylor series expansion now given that the 
equations are already re ready it's just simple arranging your coefficients in order and, and mimic what you see here in the formula giving the Taylor power series expansion. Now consider the coefficient for McLaren, McLaren series which is here. We would simply then write term y equals to sine x which is approximated by series of this form. In this case the first term it will be 0 plus 1 which will be 1x plus 0 over 2 factorial x squared minus 1 over 3 factorial x cubed plus 0 over 4 factorial x to the power 4 plus 1 over 5 factorial x to the power 5 plus dash dash dash. These dots are very very important when you write this series because if you stop there without these dots you are giving a wrong message altogether. You are saying this is a polynomial but when I leave those dots like that I'm actually communicating a message that I'm dealing here with an infinite sum which is actually a series and now I would like you to try to convince yourself that if we look at the development of coefficients we can actually arrive at the fact that the compact form of this series is the summation from n equals to 0 to infinity and the general coefficient is simply minus 1 to the power n all over 2n plus 1 which actually gives us an odd number factorial you can see here we've got the non-zero factorials we've got here is 1 factorial 3 factorial, 5 factorial, the next one will be 7 factorial. So that's why we've got that. And then multiply it by x to the power 2n plus 1. That will be the compact form of this power series expansion. So I leave out the Taylor series for you to figure out how we are going to write it. And then after that, you can now entertain yourself and practice the what you've just learned here using the following three examples. Otherwise, at this point, I would like to say thank you for listening. My name is Charles Waswani Msipa.